Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so this is the uh, Paraview tutorial uh, session. Uh, my name is Dan Lipsa. Uh, I am gonna host this session and uh, teach the, the course. I'm gonna share my screen right now. Okay. So let's see. Okay, so uh, good afternoon again. Uh, so my name is Dan Limsa. I'm a staff uh, R&D engineer at Kitware. I'm gonna teach the Paraview tutorial uh, basic. Uh, so the goal of this uh, uh, course is to walk you through the main Paraview filters and give you a good understanding on how to, to use Paraview we have another session in, in uh, two days on, on Thursday, about the same time. That's going to uh, present a few more topics uh, that's called advanced. Uh, it's just a few more topics that are, uh, I guess, less, uh, less commonly taught. Uh, so let's uh, get started here. I have a lot of material. I don't know if we're going to go through everything, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll We'll see how it goes. So I'm going to start my presentation with a few slides about Kitware and then an introduction to Paraview and then the basic usage menus, the main windows in Paraview. Uh, I'm going to, uh, uh, we're going to look at common filters and then some data analysis filters, selection, and then uh, uh, the last topic, I'm going to introduce you to a Paraview plugin that Kitor Europe uh, built that's uh, specifically applied to OpenFoam. And uh, uh, it's going to speed up loading of, of uh, uh, OpenFoam data, uh, especially the first time uh, execution of, of those uh, OpenFoam meshes. So uh, Kitware is an open source uh, software company. Uh, we have five core areas of expertise, mostly our uh, expertise in visual computing, but one of the areas is not uh, in visual computing. And actually it turns out that's the, the most successful uh, part. So we have a, a group that, uh, uh, works in computer vision, so object uh, recognition and tracking, uh, event uh, uh, recognition, uh, this picture on the uh, right lower side is uh, multimedia, multimedia understanding. Uh, and for each uh, uh, area, core area, we have uh, open source platforms that we promote. So this telescope is a uh, a structure for motion applications that build a, a 3D mesh out of a, a series of images. Quiver is the, the uh, AI library that we use to, to build Telescalter and other applications. Uh, the data and analytics group, uh, group uh, uh, builds mostly web applications that uh, uh, build on understanding, storing, managing and understanding uh, large data. So mostly uh, the visualizations we built here are uh, info, uh, info viz style of visualizations and, and map based visualizations. Uh, the HPC and visualization group. So this builds a stand, uh, standard uh, scientific visualization. So 3D that uh, they visualize 3D uh, data. I'm part of this group. And also we build uh, uh, our applications uh, run on uh, HPC machines on these large uh, 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 parallel machines. So uh, the open platforms we, we, we maintain together with the open source community uh, are uh, VTK, that's a visualization library, Paraview, it's an application that uh, 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 it's a visualization application that build that uh, uses VTK. We're going to talk about uh, Paraview in this session. 
CMB, it's a computational model builder. It's an application that looks at pre-processing. So Paraview and VTK are focused on uh, post-processing, that is visualizing the data after you, you do the simulation. CMB uh, focuses on pre-processing, uh, that is uh, preparing data at, for input for, for the simulation. TomViz is a Paraview-based uh, uh, application that uh, uh, focuses on uh, uh, material sciences. So besides Paraview, we also build Paraview-based applications for specific domains. Uh, medical computing uh, builds visualization applications for the medical field. Uh, ITK is a known uh, library for uh, segmentation uh, of, of, uh, of images, uh, of uh, uh, features in, in images. 3D Slicer is a medical visualization application similar with, with Paraview. <coughs> and we have uh, additional uh, applications and libraries in, in, the, in the medical field. And the last one is the, the software process group uh, in this group, uh, we build uh, CMake, that's uh, one of the most popular building tool for, for C++, uh, C test and C dash. So, uh, in this presentation, I'm going to go over uh, a series of uh, uh, small exercises, so you will learn best if you follow along with me. Uh, if you have Paravi installed on your machine, probably any recent version is fine. I'm going to use uh, the latest release uh, 591. If you don't have it installed, uh, it probably if you have fast uh, internet, don't take too long to just go to the website and, and da da download the, the latest, uh, uh, the, the 591 uh, release. Yep, the binary release. So uh, let's look over an introduction. Uh, let's uh, introduce Paraview for those of you who uh, don't know much about it. So Paraview is an open source uh, a visualization application. It's scalable. It runs in, in parallel on these uh, HPC machines. It's multi-platform, runs on any major operating systems. Uh, it supports distributed computation. So uh, it has an open, flexible, and intuitive uh, user interface. It's uh, extensible and based on a modular architecture, and we offer uh, commercial ma maintenance and support. So Paraview is actually a group of libraries and a series of applications. So you can run uh, Paraview on the desktop. That's the application we're going to uh, use uh, today. But you can also run it on the web. So you have a server running, uh, let's say, on a remote server, and you see the results and you interact with the with the server with Pad using uh, a web browser. So you have the same interface or close interface to what you have on the desktop. You have that running inside the web browser. Uh, Paraview can be driven through uh, Python scripting. So you, instead of uh, uh, manipulating the UI to build your visualization and execute your visualization see the results, you can uh, write a, a Python script to do the same thing. You can use this for batch processing if you need to, to process in a similar way a group of uh, images or a group of data sets. You can do that using uh, 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 scripting, Python scripting. Uh, Paraview can display in these large uh, cave uh, environments where you have uh, you you show your your image on on several uh, screens. And also, Paraview is designed to run in parallel, so that was the the goal of its uh, uh, creation. Uh, Paraview Catalyst is a, a library, it's a Paraview library that you link with your simulation and you uh, generate uh, visualization, analysis and visualization at simulation running time. So for each time step, 
you generate one time step and then you run analysis and visualization, generate series of images or extract features. Uh, the, the goal for this, this is a, a way of processing called in situ uh, visualization. You avoid storing the data in a traditional way, way you run the simulation, store all the data on uh, the hard, hard drives and then you visualize the data. This is called post-processing in situ. Uh, for every time step you do the processing and store the data, the goal is to save the time needed to, to save all this data and also the, the space needed to save the data. So instead of saving all the data, you analyze and visualize data for each time step. Uh, I mentioned before, so besides Paraview, we build Paraview-based applications that use the, the core of Paraview, but we redesign the interface to simplify it and uh, to be specific to a certain domain. So this is one of these applications that's uh, focused on uh, visualizing and processing of, of uh, point clouds. So Paraview is uh, widely used uh, by academic government and commercial institutions. Uh, I think this number is old, it's been downloaded 135K uh, per year. Uh, we, we earned a couple of awards as well. Uh, you can use Paraview for any data range. Once you have larger data, you will have to run on a parallel machine where the data is split into pieces. It's processed and visualized individually, and then the, the results are composed back. So uh, using that uh, model of, of processing, we can uh, process billions of structured or unstructured uh, cells depending on, on the size of the, of the parallel machine. So Paraview was, uh, the development for Paraview started in 2000s uh, as a collaborative, collaborative effort between Los Alamos National Lab and Kitware. Uh, Sandia has been a major contributor since 2005. <coughs> uh, Paraview 6 was, uh, 0 0.6 was released in October 2002. Uh, for Paraview 3, that we released in 2007, we rewrote re GUI to move from TCLTK to, to QT or Qt. Uh, Paraview 4 was released in 2013. Uh, for this version, we uh, redesigned the properties panel. So right now, all the interface that you see for, for filters, that is for, for the processing of your, your uh, data, uh, that interface is generated using an XML uh, description, so no code is needed. So that makes it easy to add filters and, and uh, uh, makes it a lot easier to, to <coughs> write plugins as well. So Paradigm 5 in 2016, uh, we uh, up updated, upgraded to OpenGL 3.2. So we, we've seen a large uh, improvement in, in rendering uh, performance. <clears throat> so when you want to visualize your data, you uh, change from uh, using numbers to you know, seeing a picture on, on the screen. And the goal is to better understand your data to gather insights into what into the phenomenon you are you are studying. <clears throat> uh, <coughs> the data types used by by Paraview and VTK uh, are are the following. So these are uh, typical 3D visualization data types, but. Uh, the implementation is, is specific to, to VTK and the naming is, is specific. So the first one, and these are uh, just various optimizations uh, that can be done in, in specific cases. So the, the first one, this is the most optimized in a way, 
This is the uniform rectilinear grid. Uh, we call it BTK image data. So for, the, for the, this uh, data set, we only need to store <coughs> the origin of the data and then the spacing. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, the extents for the data. So that's the, the three, three pieces of information we need to store. This allows us to have a, a point position. So these are called nodes in, the, for in other fields. And also allows us to, to know the cells. So these are, uh, the cells are implicitly deducted based on the knowledge that we have a, a uniform grid. So the, the, cells, the cells are used for interpolation. <clears throat> The next uh, uh, data set, this is a little less optimized. We store a little more information to, to be able to store the data set. So in this case, we store the spacing along each direction, <clears throat> also the origin and the extent. Now that's the VTK rectilinear data. For the structure data, we have to store the position of each point beside <coughs> besides the extents. <clears throat> so we store a lot more data. This is like uh, the rectilinear grid that's sort of deformed. So you push that grid and the position of the points in space can be any position. Uh, the, poly the polygonal data needs to store both point position and cell information. So a lot more data is stored. This is very similar with the unstructured grid. The difference is that the unstructured grid uh, can store 3D cells as well. So polygonal data was made a separate uh, data type. So uh, because it's, uh, it's also used for uh, sending or storing data to be sent to the, to the graphics card. <clears throat> and we have a few more uh, data sets that are more uh, advanced and less uh, widely used. <clears throat> in, in particular, the multi-block data set, you can put together these other five data types in a tree-like hierarchy. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay, let's see if there are any questions. No questions, okay. Uh, we can keep going. <clears throat> so, uh, how do you get more information uh, about Paraview? You can use the help menu. That's, uh, we have a, a number of uh, links. We have all these resources listed in the help menu of, of the application as well. So the main one is the, the Paraview uh, website. Uh, we have a number of tutorials uh, listed uh, at this link. Also, uh, this presentation is, is based on the Paraview tutorial. This is a PDF document uh, created by a researcher at Sandia, Ken Moreland. So uh, you can go through that document as well. It's going to have similar examples with what we, we use here. And uh, so if you missed some of the examples here or uh, you want to learn more uh, about Paraview, that's, that's a good resource. <clears throat> uh, Paraview Guide, this is... Uh, This is the uh, comprehensive uh, 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 resource for Paraview. Uh, it's both, uh, uh, so any, any, anything you wanna look up uh, about the interface or uh, about how to use Paraview, that's, that's the best resource to, to, to look at. Uh, if you have questions, you, you've seen bugs or things don't work the way you expect, uh, you can ask questions on the discourse uh, uh, 
discussion board. This is quite an active uh, uh, resource, so most questions get answered over there. So this is the help menu. We can look at it in, in Paraview as well. So I started Paraview on my machine. I hope you can see it. So we can look at the help menu. Getting started with Paraview is just a short two page uh, document where it shows you a few things about Paraview. Paraview guide, that's the website I mentioned. This is the comprehensive Paraview resource, uh, a reference resource. We recently put that, stored that on the web. Uh, it was a, a PDF document before, but on, you know, being on the web makes it a lot more accessible. So that's, that's a, a nice thing. <clears throat> uh, readers, filters, and writers reference. This is, this shows you all the uh, sources. Sources are uh, processes that create data. We use this mostly for testing, but sometimes for like sampling data and so on. So you have a, a comprehensive resource of all these uh, uh, sources. For instance, we have a source that creates a code and you have its parameters, yeah. Filters, these are algorithms that uh, you can apply to, to process your data. Uh, readers read data and writers write data. So uh, note these are only the readers and writers that are compiled into Paraview. There might be uh, compiled into the Paraview binary. There might be uh, readers and writers that are not compiled in either because we uh, we didn't have the funding to make the library used by that filter, uh, make it compile on all the platforms and uh, uh, ship it with, with the binary. Uh, so there are various, or the library is, is not free. So there are various reasons why readers might not be uh, in the binary, even if they are in the sources. So, you know, always check the sources uh, for that and these are the writers, yeah? This, this information is also linked, uh, you'll see in, in the help button for each filter when you add it to the, to the processing pipeline. <clears throat> so this is the link to the Paraview tutorial uh, this presentation is based on. Uh, we have a few more tutorials. This is uh, just Let's see, I'm gonna try again. Click too many times. So example visualization shows you just four uh, visualizations. You can click on one of them and you will see the pipeline for that visualization. So <clears throat> yeah, so this is a nice uh, way to just get started. You can uh, get back to to the original Paraview by clicking reset session, okay? So uh, the Paraview website, we talked about this, the wiki. So the wiki has some uh, good, more advanced uh, documents describing various features in Paraview. Uh, it's kind of trickier to, to maintain that and also maintain it per version. So we try to move things from uh, the wiki into the regular documentation, but it still has a, a number of, of good uh, documents there. So the community support, this is the discourse discussion board, uh, release notes. We offer professional support, as I mentioned, let's see. Uh, the blog is a good way to keep track of things that are new. So, you know, check check the online blog as well if you want to track what's going on in Paraview. <clears throat> okay, so let me close this. Okay.
uh, bug report. So this points to the to the GitLab repository where we store TaraView. So we, we keep track of bugs by doing that, you know, by by using GitLab. So I I, I recommend uh, if you uh, file a bug report, you know, post post it on on this course as well. A good idea. Ask a question about that and see. Uh, may, maybe people have a workaround or uh, this way you can uh, sort of advertise this bug as well. Okay, about has some good information about uh, the OpenGL library that you are using. So I'm using the Intel one. Uh, I have a good uh, 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 NVIDIA card as well, but uh, so that's a good way to, to know what exactly uh, OpenGL card you are using on your machine. Also, if you connect through a parallel connection, if you connect to a server, you will see the OpenGL library used by the uh, server as well. And you see uh, links to other uh, information about the Python libraries used, Matplotlib, and so on. <clears throat> okay. So let's look at uh, some basic usage for, for Paraview. <clears throat> so the user interface, uh, it has menus, uh, toolbars where the most men in the menus, all the commands should be there. Uh, toolbars, the most commonly used commands are linked to the toolbar. Uh, this panel here, that's the pipeline browser. So this is the, uh, visualization pipeline that you, you build, processing pipeline that you build to analyze and visualize your data. And then you have two panels. The properties panels allow you to change properties for the selected algorithm. So each algorithm has a number of parameters or a number of properties that you can change. And that changes how uh, the algorithm functions. Uh, the information panel, shows you information about the, sele the selected data set. So it shows you the number of points, the number of cells, uh, ranges for uh, the data set, uh, ranges for the actual data stored in the data set, bounds for the data set. So <clears throat> uh, these are two important panels. And this is the 3D view. Uh, you can, uh, all these panels, you can click on them and uh, close them. So to get them back, you can go to the view menu and they're all listed there. So we can look in Paraview. I have another panel here. You can close this. This is the properties and the information panels. Yeah. And you can also close, let's say you close by mistake the information panel can go in view and you see the information panel can add it back, yeah. So let's start with uh, some simple examples. So let's start with creating a cylinder in Paraview. Uh, so we're gonna go to sources the, all the sources are organized in different ways. We can go to alphabetical cylinder, yeah? So notice we have quite a number of uh, uh, sources. If you look at filters, it's uh, a lot more. So we have ways to, uh, for you to search through these large number of, of sources and filters. But for now, let's go here and create the cylinder, yeah. So after you created the cylinder, notice you have this apply button that's highlighted. So for each operation in Paraview, we have to press apply to trigger that operation. So the reason for that is uh, often you, you work with large data and you have to to know when you start the processing so that if it takes a long time, you know what's going on. So that's a, a design choice that we, we use in, in Paraview. So press apply. 
And now you see the, the cylinder, yeah, it has only six, uh, six faces. Uh, you can use simple camera manipulation to uh, interact with your data set. So uh, you can use the left button to rotate your, your data set. Uh, if you have a three mouse button, which uh, uh, is recommended, you can use the middle and the uh, right button to pan and zoom. I, I'm on a laptop and many people are on laptops. Uh, I have control and left button that zooms and uh, shift. Let's see. So control and shift should be the, the, uh, the, the modifiers that you can use to interact with your data. So you can see that uh, in the edit settings. Let's see, camera. So shift, let's say you want to pan, so shift pans and control zooms. So you can do that for the 3D view, then do the same thing for 2D views, but so this way uh, you can make it work for uh, a laptop as well. So you can uh, use uh, shift, let's say to pan and control to zoom. Yeah instead of using the middle and the right uh, mouse button. So this way you can work fairly well on a laptop as well. You can uh, hold down X, Y, or Z to rotate around that axis. So holding down Y and then <clears throat> dragging the mouse button rotates around the Y axis. Yep, and you can do the same for the X axis. Yeah, you have to move your mouse up and down. Yep, and the uh, Z axis, the same way, move mouse up and down. <clears throat> okay, uh, these, uh, <clears throat> so after you zoom, this is a reset to Reset, uh, it resets the view so that you best see your data. So, you know, you can pan it, move it out of the way, and then you can uh, reset the view. This resets uh, the view for a particular data set. So if you have several data sets loaded and you select one and then press this button to zoom to that data set. Yep. Zoom to box allows you to draw a rectangle and zoom to that one. And this orients your data set with particular axes. So uh, minus Z, we use the right hand side uh, axis coordinate system and minus Z points toward uh, outside of the screen. So towards the viewer. Yep, so that's minus Z plus Z flips it, yep, and all these other ones uh, align your data set with, with, the, with the axis. Yeah. Uh, this button shows you the, uh, the orienting uh, uh, axis orientation axis, yeah. And uh, this shows you the center. If you make this uh, data set transparent, you drag down the scroll bar here, there is an opacity control here, and you can make the cylinder transparent. 
Oh no, this this center shows you a, a axis in the center of the data set. We set center, so this allows you to change the rotation center. So click on this and then place it someplace else. And then the data set will rotate around that center. Reset center, place it back into the center of the data. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so let's move on to uh, this uh, cylinder source. You can uh, change parameters to all filters, including uh, these uh, source filters that just create data. So we can change the resolution to make that, let's put back the opacity to one and then change the resolution to uh make it let's say 20. that will make a rounder cylinder yeah <clears throat> so you've seen after i changed the the resolution let's move it back to six the apply button was highlighted so the change is only visible or is only applied executed when we press the apply button yeah if we change our mind we can press reset yeah so 36 apply yeah that makes it makes a round cylinder uh, in in uh, paraview we all we have four types of of processings we have sources that create data filters that get an input data and create an output and does some sort of processing a reader that reads from the disk a writer that writes to disk. all these are called pipeline objects as well yeah so these properties that you can apply to filters you can copy and paste between different filters so for instance if you have two cylinders you can copy all the properties from one filter, from one cylinder, apply them and paste them to the other cylinder. Uh, you can also save properties uh, to be used as default. So if you want a cylinder to be always created with the 36 faces, you can save it here. Yep, and then you can delete this and then create another cylinder sources cylinder apply and it's created with 36 uh, faces yeah so if you want to go back this is a reset to default settings and then save yeah <clears throat> okay so these are properties or filter properties or pipeline object properties so for each filter you have properties that modify how that filter uh, works display properties are associated with a pair uh, data produced by the filter and the view where that data is, is displayed so uh, that's one thing that can be confusing in Paraview. You have to realize that display properties are associated with this with this pair. Data produced by the filter, and you uh, specify that by selecting a filter, and the view where you display that, that filter, yeah? So, uh, let's see. So let's change uh, our cylinder and set a new color for this cylinder. <clears throat> so we do that by using the ed uh, edit color map uh, button here, or that's a display property. So you see the same thing in the display uh, properties here. So we can make the cylinder red. <clears throat> Yeah.
And the third group of properties, these are view properties, these apply only to a view. So uh, important ones are the axis grid, uh, So let's uh, change that. So properties, these are filter properties, display and view. Yeah, so you can add in see an axis for the cylinder and you can see the, the bounds of, of the data this way. <clears throat> uh, certain filters and uh, you know, you'll, you'll see quickly that a lot of filters also display and views have a lot of properties. We, uh, we help you manage the complexity by uh, splitting properties into regular properties and advanced properties. So to see all properties, you click this advanced button. So notice you have a lot more properties added. <laughs> you click the advanced button. Also a way to to find properties is to use this search button. So for instance, you can search for opacity <coughs> and notice you see uh, only that property highlighted here. So all properties that have this string are displayed. All other properties are hidden. So you can change the opacity. One tricky thing about this feature is that uh, Sometimes you are looking for properties, but you don't find them because you have a string here that uh, hides them. So you have to make sure you delete the, the string in the search box. <coughs> I'm sorry. So oh, we can also search for specular and change the specular highlights here. You can see some specular highlights yep, as you interact with the cylinder. <coughs> okay. So uh, the lights properties, these are view properties, but uh, uh, recently they have their own uh, panel. <clears throat> this is in view light inspector. Yep. <coughs> so you can see here that every uh, data in Paraview is, is lit by uh, four data sources. Yeah. Can click here. There's no lighting. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we have this auto apply button that allows you to always auto apply. You can check that. I I don't use it, but you can if you use small data. <clears throat> you can let's say change resolution and it always uh, applies the changes directly. You don't have to click apply, yeah? The color palette is used to change the background of your visualization together with uh, any relevant colors. So, you know, if you want to print your, your uh, model, you can use the print background or the white background. And notice other colors are changed as well. So the grid is black right now. It was white before. Yep, and there is a, a host of colors that are going to get changed, like selection color. You can see those in the edit color palette here. So you see a number of colors that get changed if you change the background. So 
we allow you to change the background directly as well, but you have to be careful to <clears throat> make sure it works with the rest of the colors. <clears throat> We also offer uh, undo and redo for both uh, uh, property changes and for the camera. So <clears throat> these are the buttons here. You can start uh, pressing undo and you see all the changes I've, I've done. I changed the resolution of the cylinder. I removed the lighting made it opaque, added the uh, uh, specular light. Yep, so all the changes you can go back and forth. And also you can do the same thing for the camera. Yep, so I played with it, moved it around. Okay. Uh, a few more, well. Let's see. Okay. I can remove the axis grid. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so besides creating data with uh, a source, you can also read data from disk. We support a number of, uh, of uh, data sets, types, uh, if you don't have, a, you know, if your data is not supported, you can ask on the mailing list, you can look as I, I mentioned in the source code, my, you, we might have the reader already, uh, ask on, the, on this course, or you can write your own uh, data importer using Python, using this uh, programmable source or uh, so in here, we don't read the data from this, but we create the data ourselves. Uh, but you can, in there, you can just use a uh, Python reader and read the data from disk. Uh, to write this kind of uh, uh, readers, you use VTK programming, and we're gonna cover in the advanced section uh, more about that. But for now, you can just look at what we are doing here. So here we are reading the output. Uh, this is the output for the filter. And we create uh, a number of 12 random points. Yep, we use the random function here. We set the points to the output, and then we create uh, the cells that represent the points. And we insert those cells. Uh, so uh, this creates 12 random points. Uh, so that's one possibility to, to, to write a, a custom reader. You can also write a, a plugin that's uh, uh, used by Paraview uh, without recompilation. So you can write the plugin in, in C++ and you can uh, you have to write an XML description of the interface uh, or you can write the plugin in, in Python and uh, uh, you don't have to compile anything. And you can read that plugin in the binary uh, Paraview and it can be used as, as any, other, any other reader. So uh, this Python algorithm allows you to also write uh, the description of the interface. So uh, everything will, will work as, as a reader that's written in C++. So uh, let's see. So before we move on to more complicated, more complex uh, uh, examples, let's uh, check if there are any questions, let's see. No, okay. Uh, okay, so we can go on. <clears throat> so, 
So let's look at more complex examples. Let's uh, read data from from uh, uh, disk. We're going to look at this uh, disk out ref example. Uh, all these examples they ship with Paraview as well. So before we do that, let's reset the session. <clears throat> Okay, and uh, we're gonna load this file. So open, file open. And notice in the uh, special places here, we have an examples place. You can double click here and it points you to the folder where we store these examples. So you're gonna load the disk out ref example, data set, yeah. So uh, in here, notice by default, it doesn't load all the variables. It just loads a few of them. You can click to load all variables. There is an option, I think, that uh, allows you to always load all variables. Uh, but make sure you load all the variables in this example. So apply, okay? And after you loaded the disk, you can uh, visualize using, uh, well, so in here, we show uh, display properties. So these are display properties that are also placed in the, in the toolbar. So we, let's see. This is the, the ones, yeah. So we allow you to uh, toggle the legend, uh, edit the, the either co the colors, so you can either color the, the object or you can edit the color mapping. So that is map an attribute to colors. Uh, we use these to change the mapping between scalars and colors. So that is you have a range of values for the scalars and that's mapping to a range of colors. You can change that mapping. So you can use uh, either map the whole range of scalars or you can map a custom range. That's useful when, for instance, you have an outlier, you map the whole range, uh, all your colors will be, let's say if you map the whole range between uh, two uh, colors between blue and red, and you have a very large outlier, all your colors will be blue because that outlier pulls uh, everything toward the lower end of the colors. Yeah, so you can use a custom scalar range to eliminate that outlier. Uh, reset for all times, uh, time steps. That's, it looks at the, the scalar range for all the time steps. We'll see an example where that's, that's useful. Also, you can uh, rescale for visible range. Uh, this allows you to specify what's the attribute you're going to use for mapping. And this uh, uh, changes uh, the kind of representation you see. Yeah, you can see a, a surface, <clears throat> or you can see surface with edges, or you can see just a, a, a specific uh, feature edges. Yeah, specific uh, features in the in the data. So that's the feature edges. Uh, representation, yeah. <clears throat> can see the outline. Let's see points. So you have many, many different representations, yeah. So uh, we have a large number of filters, as as you've seen. Uh, When you go over a filter, it shows you 
So certain filters are grayed out if the input for that filter doesn't match. Yep, so you can see why it's grayed out by uh, going with the mouse over it and it's gonna show you uh, why that is the case. So for instance, uh, if you wanna apply the stream tracer, you will need to have a vector in the data set. If there is no vector, stream tracer is grayed out. So that's what this example shows you. Uh, where warp by vector, that's the same case. So wavelet doesn't have a vector. You uh, look over the, uh, over the filter that's grayed out. You don't, uh, you will see the reason why it's grayed out. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's look at some of the uh, common filters that you can use in your visualizations. So these filters are uh, the calculator, <coughs> allows you to, to compute derived attributes. So you have a, a few arrays in your data set, you can compute, uh, uh, have a formula and compute uh, a derived attribute using that formula. Contour computes a, a, an ISO contour that is a surface that has the same value attribute for all the points on that surface. Clip uh, cuts a piece of your data set, slice, uh, computes a slice, Threshold uh, keeps only parts of the data set that ha have a st a specific uh, uh, values like being in a certain range. Uh, extract subset removes a subset of uh, image data. Uh, glyph places glyphs uh, or uh, geometric descriptions such as arrows or spheres at points in your data set. So this can be used to, to see a vector field by placing arrows, or it can be used to see a tensor uh, field by using uh, like uh, oval shaped glyphs. And use stream tracer also to visualize uh, vector fields and work by vector the same way. A uh, group data set allows you to group data sets to process uh, several data sets as just one unit. And extract data set is used for uh, uh, AMR data sets, so for uh, multi resolution uh, data sets. Uh, we allow you to manage the large number of filters by using this quick launch that allows you to also type a few letters and select, select a subset of the filters that match those letters. So uh, for instance, to, to find the surface extract filter, you can just type a few letters that will restrict the number of filters to only those that match those, those letters, yeah? So this is the uh, control space in Windows or alt space in, in Mac, on, on the Mac, or, or Windows or, or Linux. So let's uh, look at this uh, contour filter. So, Remember, we are processing this uh, disk data set. So to apply the contour, you have to specify the data you apply the contour on, and then control space, contour, I just uh, typed C-O-N, yep. Or you can choose it from the common filters, yep. And then press enter. So when you contour, you have to specify what's the, the value you contour on and that's going to be temperature and the value is going to be 500. So you, you contour on the temperature attribute and you select all the points that have the value 500 and then apply. 
Yep, and you see this surface. Okay, so we do something else. We want to extract the surface for this data, the data set. Yep. So this data set is a volume. We want to extract the outer shell. So we extract the surface from the data. So you have to select the data and then control space extract surface. Yeah. It's always important to specify the input to the filter. So that's what that's what I've done. I selected the disk and then test extract surface. Just apply. So right now it looks like the original disk, but it's only the shell. Yep, and we can cut this surface using uh, the clip filter. So control space clip. Uh, we don't show the plane and then apply. Yep, so it, it cut the, the surface. So this is the pipeline we, we have and this is the pipeline represented in a more uh, common way, more uh, usual way. Uh, notice we have these eyes. If the eyes are open, that means the data set is shown. If the eyes are closed, the data set is not shown. Yep, so we show the clip and the contour. Yeah. So let's uh, color uh, this the same way. We color it by pressure. So we select the clip and then color it by pressure and also select the contour and color that by pressure. Okay, so we have the same image there. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we can have, we can display several views from the same pipeline. So you only always have just one pipeline, but you can display different data from that pipeline in these different views. You create another view by splitting the current view. So you can split uh, vertically or horizontally. So let's first uh, create an additional data. <clears throat> so we want to clip the, the actual data set, not the, the shell. So we're going to select the data set and then clip. And then apply. So now it's it's uh, the data set is is full. And color by pressure. <clears throat> we don't want to show the plane. Yep. And then color by pressure. Well. Okay. and hide this clip too. Okay. So we can show, uh, so let's split the view and then show clip two and then color by temperature. Yep, 
cap. So this way you can compare how pressure looks like compared with, with temperature, yeah? These views are not very nice. You can synchronize the views by right click, link camera, and then clicking on the other view. I think uh, minus X is a good uh, orientation for the data set, yeah? So this way, this is temperature, this is pressure. <laughs> you can move the the color bars uh, by dragging them. Okay. You can move these links around by dragging them. Yeah. Okay, let's reset and look at something else. Uh, let's look at streamlines. So streamlines are a visualization method that allows you to see what's going on uh, with the vector field. It's a, uh, it's, Similar with smoke in a in a wind tunnel, yep. So you will see where where the wind goes around your your model. Uh, you do a similar thing in the computer using using streamlines. <clears throat> so uh, you use streamlines by using this uh, stream stream tracer. So let's uh, load the same disk data set and use the recent files yeah <coughs> make sure you check all variables and then apply streamlines make sure the right data is selected so and do it this way Tracer. So you see a line here. This is the seeding uh, line. So you uh, start advecting streamlines from points along this line. You can change this seeding line to to be a point cloud. Yep. And. Uh, you have to specify the vector. The vector is V, that's fine. So just apply. Okay, so you see the, the sphere that contains the, the point cloud can make that, uh, remove that. So show sphere, remove that, yeah. <clears throat> Notice these are just lines. Uh, you cannot apply lighting to lines. So to, to make this uh, more visually appealing, you can place a tube over these lines. So let's do that. So control space and type tube. This is the tube filter. You apply it to the streamline. So that's correct. Apply. Yeah, so this looks a lot better. <clears throat> And then we can apply the glyph filter. So this is fine. You don't know uh, which direction the, the vectors or the, the stream, the vector flow goes. So to see the direction, you can apply the, the glyphs and orient the glyphs uh, uh, using the vector. And also you can scale the glyphs using the vector as well. So let's do that. So we're gonna apply the glyph filter. We apply the glyph filter not to the tube, but to the stream tracer. So you wanna apply the, the glyphs on that, on that stream line. So glyph, yeah. We use cone 
and the orientation array. So we want to use V, not the normals. Yep. And also scale should be V. So you orient the vectors using V and scale using V. This button here is the reset using current data values. So make sure you press this, otherwise your cones will be uh, the wrong size. And then apply. Yep, so you see number of cones here. And we color by temperature. So let's do that. <clears throat> Okay. Okay, so this is the streamlines. We reset right now. No questions. Let's continue. So uh, some common data analysis filters. So uh, we've seen for the common filters, we've seen clip, we've seen streamlines, we've seen contour. For the data uh, analysis filters, uh, we can select uh, certain data pieces either using brushing or using uh, selection by value. And then we can extract that selection and process that data separately. We can plot uh, uh, attributes over a line. So uh, specify the line position and then uh, do plots basically by, that's a way to look inside your, your data. Uh, also you can plot uh, data over time and uh, you can probe as well so that reads samples values inside of your data. So that's what probe location does. So let's look at uh, an example that uses uh, a plot over line. So we're going to use also the disk. So we create a disk. Oops. That's a data set, so we load that. Make sure you select all the variables. Okay, and then press apply. I think minus X is a good orientation here. And then let's clip the data <clears throat> just to, to be able to see what's going on, apply, don't show the plane, yeah? And then uh, let's uh, use this filter, uh, let's see, this one. So plot over line, but we apply that not on the clip data, but on the actual disk, yeah? This one, plot over line. So you see the lines, basically you sample along this line and then uh, plot the values that you sampled. You can change the position of the points by using, uh, place, place the mouse and pressing the, the one so press the one key or the two key. So two key for the second point. Yeah. You can uh, select the clip and then do surface with edges. And then select the plot again. So notice when you press uh, the two key, you can place the, the point at any position. If you press uh, control two, 
you will place the points only at uh, points. Yeah, so where the edges intersect. So control two and control one. Okay, or one and two. Uh, you know, this is fine, but the most control is if you just uh, specify the, the actual values you want. So the, the values we want are 0, 0, uh, 0, and 0, 0, 10. Okay, so this is our line here. It starts here and it goes up to the top. Okay, so that's the line that uh, we're going to sample all the attributes this way. So apply. So you see a number of attributes. This is temperature and you have a few more. You see all these uh, in the display properties. And you can uncheck them. So let's uncheck all of them and leave only temperature and pressure. So notice they get removed here. Temperature and pressure, yep. So you have only two. Uh, this is temperature is pretty big. Pressure is very, well, it has, it, it varies, but being so different than, uh, than uh, temperature. So pressure being so different, being so much smaller, you just see it at the bottom of the screen. So there is a way to, uh, to see this better. And the way this works is you can uh, select pressure, yeah, and place that on the bottom right axis. So notice what I've done. I selected pressure. That's, I want those values instead of going to the bottom left axis. Yep, I want those to go to the bottom right axis. So that's what I've done. I've selected uh, pressure and placed that to the bottom right axis. So this way you can see much better. Uh, you can see uh, that when uh, temperature decreases, pressure first increases and then decreases. Yep. So it's a, it's a way to compare uh, two, two attributes. And you can uh, change the chart title. Let's say this is temperature versus pressure. You can change the left axis that is temperature. Uh, the right axis, you have to toggle the advanced properties to see it. So bottom axis, that is distance, let's say, or Z, maybe that's a better name, yeah. Right axis, this is pressure. Yeah, so you can we quickly make a nice looking uh, visualization here. And you can also color this clip. Color that by you know, either temperature or pressure. Okay, so this is pressure increases and then it decreases the way we see it on the graph as well. Okay. Uh, so we talked about this. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is you can adjust these views by dragging. Yep and you can go back by resetting the view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
you can also add the histogram. <clears throat> so again, you have to be careful what you apply the histogram on. So you want to apply it to the disk, otherwise it's going to skew your, your values. If you just apply it to the clip, it's going to use just half of the, of the value. They have so disk and then apply histogram, apply. And then change, uh, let's see. So you have to, to think what do you histogram? So again, you have to specify the, the values you, you're gonna apply the histogram to. We apply it to temperature in this case. So temperature apply, yeah. Okay. So let's reset. Uh, volume rendering. So this is very easy to use. You just load the disk. Apply minus X and then change. Well, you can color it, let's say, by pressure and then change to the, the representation to be volume. Might take a while, yes. So, this is how you see it for pressure, you can see it for temperature as well. This is how you, it is for temperature, yep. And you can add the streamlines and you can see very nice representation, uh, multimodal representations using both volume and streamlines. <clears throat> you can change the transfer function. So, uh, let's click, this is the uh, edit color map. So notice here you have two uh, controls. So the first control, this is the mapping between range of scalars and range of colors. This line here is the mapping between uh, uh, range of scalars and opacity. So notice if the scalars uh, for low values of the scalars, uh, you have transparent uh, representation and then the, the voxels are transparent and then uh, the voxels are going to be more and more opaque. You can uh, adjust this by dragging on this uh, line. Notice these uh, uh, control points appear. Yep, so we can drag on these control points and change the opacity and create uh, the opacity you want. You can delete one of these control points by pressing backspace. <coughs> Select, then backspace. And then, yeah, you get back to the original linear uh, transfer uh, function. <clears throat> you can change the, <clears throat> the color palette. So for instance, you can put uh, this uh, black body radiation, a nice one, apply. Yeah. <clears throat> and we have uh, a list of well-designed color palettes that you can choose from. Okay, let's uh, reset. We are running out of time here, so I will just uh, uh, briefly show you what else you can do with PadView, but we won't all go over those. 
Okay, uh, well, let's reset this. <clears throat> so you can use data, you can load data with time as well in Paraview and you have like a, a player control where you can step through your data, you can play your data as well and run everything in a loop. It shows you the time step and the time value. Yeah. Uh, we can query data uh, and select data based on values. And that's this uh, uh, find data button here in, in Paraview. So this opens up a dialogue and you can specify values that you want to be selected and those values are gonna be selected. Uh, so that's what I show here. We specify that you want to select all the cells that are greater or equal than 1.5. Yep. And you see a number of cells selected here. <clears throat> or you can select values by clicking on them or brushing them using your mouse to, to drag uh, the cell around the cells that you want to be selected. So you can select cells on surfaces or select through uh, <clears throat> and uh, the selection will go through the volume. And you can add labels to the cell selected so you can see values for attributes for those cells. Yeah. Uh, Paraview allows you to do scripting. I mentioned this before. And the easiest way to uh, generate a script is to use these tools start trace, yeah, and then okay. And then you build your visualization. Let's say you create a sphere and then you clip it, yeah. <clears throat> so after you created your, your visualization pipeline, you can do tools stop trace and that creates a Python uh, script that you can use and then produce the same visualization. So you can save this script, edit it. This is the way you, you see how uh, you can do various things if you don't want to uh, look in the documentation as well. So that's, that's a very uh, handy uh, way to figure out how to do things in this uh, Python scripting uh, uh, language. Yeah. <clears throat> OK, so. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, one last thing I wanted to mention uh, is uh, this uh, uh, fast surface plugin that uh, Kitware Europe uh, worked on. Uh, we have a blog about this and uh, you can get the plugin and build it uh, from this repository. It, uh, it allows you to speed up processing for loading uh, uh, an open foam data set uh, so we, we've seen speed ups uh, from seven seconds to one second for the initial uh, rendering of a surface. Uh, so, you know, the, the, this uh, slowdown happens only initially after that the, the surface is, is cached. So it's going to work correctly. But if you are annoyed by this uh, slowdown uh, when you first load your data set, uh, this is uh, uh, this plugin will will help you with, with this. So check it out. <clears throat> we have two you know two versions: the fast surface and fast surface with with edges as well. So uh, with this, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, please join us uh, on on Thursday around the same time. We have a advanced uh, pair of view where. We can look at, we're going to look at two things. One is going to be uh, user defined filters in Paraview. So this is mostly uh, VTK programming with some uh, in, in Python. <laughs> and the second thing, we're going to look at uh, 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 Ray uh, path tracing in Paraview. So uh, allowing you to generate more appealing visualizations using Paraview. So, 
Uh, this is a picture also generated by uh, Kitual Europe, where they used these uh, advanced rendering techniques uh, that we're going to talk about uh, in our uh, next presentation. So thank you very much. <laughs>